we're all here because we're not all there tonight is another edition of Stray Cats Outdoor Cartoon Television. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. It's Wednesday, and you know what that means. What does that mean, Ryan? <clears throat> Talk about fishing. It means stay in your lane. <laughs> stay in your lane. Stay in your lane, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> hey, we got it. We got another amazing show worked up for you tonight. And, uh, <laughs> and if you can't tell, I'm extremely excited about it. it Wait, what it, what are you doing over there? This is he's is he wafting. He's fornicating air my way, and that is not good. I don't know if you can fornicate air. That's I don't know what that is, but <laughs> hey, uh, tonight another jam pack show. Uh, we are very excited. Coming up first is uh, Mr. Smiley, the guy Smiley of bass fishing, ladies and gentlemen, John Cox. Yes, Johnny Cox coming on this show uh after johnny is a force to be reckoned with the one and only brandon cobb <laughs> gracing uh, us with his presence for the first time as a feature guest on this show he's made some cameos first time as brandon as a featured guest on straight cast the glorified version of an outdoor cartoon television fishing show that's a mouthful. Nice save. That's yeah. a that's a that's a mouthful right there. <laughs> um, also, uh, as usual, prizes galore, and tonight is a big big night. First off, we got two giveaways tonight. Two giveaways. Now listen up close. Put your thinking caps on and pay close attention to this. The first prize giveaway is uh, not the first prize, but the, the, the first giveaway. Not the first prize. Right. But first prize is a winner. Yes, both winners yes. are winning first prize. Yes, both winners win first prize, yeah. but the first giveaway tonight is from T.H. Marine. Give it up for T.H. Marine. Come on. T.H. Marine. Yes. We're proud to be part of the T.H. Marine team, and uh, we are giving away... Courtesy of TH Marine, a $50 prize pack worth of TH Marine merch. Um, all you have to do is like and share the live Facebook feed. Like and share the live Facebook feed. What is going on here? This Is the noise in my head bothering you? <laughs> <laughs> is, 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 I was talking to you. Is the voices in my head bothering you? <laughs> the <laughs> So... All you have to do is like and share the live Facebook feed, and you can win the $50 TH Marine prize pack. I'm talking with my hands a lot, if you notice. Uh, then, here is the biggie, the big Lebowski, the big Shambuzo. Uh, coming on the show is, for the first time ever, the love of my life, Jasmine Renwick, is coming on the show here tonight. My Jazzy Pie, my daughter. She's coming on the show to tell us about a very, very special deal going on, and it's Camp Quality. And for those of you that do not know what Camp Quality is, it's a camp for kids with cancer. It is a camp where kids have a week out of their life. They, during this week, the goal is to forget that they have this disease. It's a serious deal. Okay, it's a big deal. These kids have a phenomenal time at this camp quality. Anything goes. It's like a, it, it's like a camp a palooza. Yeah, for for a week for these kids. Bottomless ice cream. Yeah, bottomless ice cream. In fact, Ryan Whitaker and I and uh, and Larry and Jen Berg will be representing Stray Cast there at Camp Quality this year. Yeah, uh, get at, my milkshake on. Yeah, you will be. That's yes. for sure. But here's the deal. John Cox and Berkeley Fishing are giving away a mega, mega prize pack tonight. And all you have to do to win this prize pack is make a donation to Camp Quality. J.P. High is going to put the link. He's going to pin it to the top of the Facebook page. Okay? You can make a donation of a dollar you can make a donation of a hundred thousand dollars stretching stretching there but all you got to do 
is make a donation, big or small. Any bit helps. This is a non-for-profit organization. All proceeds go to the expenses that uh, this camp accrues to help the kids out. So make a donation. On, on the yes, on on the link that Jasmine's provide that JP is going to provide that I sent to you. You got it right, JP. Yeah, I'm work. I'm working on it. JP's It'll putting be it up in a minute. Okay, he's putting it up. Um, so make a donation, big or small. It doesn't matter. Everything helps. And the prize pack that John Cox and Berkeley are giving you is amazing. Amazing. You're not going to need. Any soft plastic baits for the next couple of years. Let's just put it that way. <laughs> yeah. It's going to set the world on fire. Yeah, I mean, it, and it's it's all the new Berkeley stuff. It, it's it's a pretty cool deal. So um, go ahead, make a donation. Again, big or small. Don't like need, mean to sound like I'm pleading, but this is, this is an amazing opportunity for you bass fishermen, fisher people out there. Um, to make a difference and to win some cool stuff. So that's it. Two prizes, the camp quality prize from John Cox and Berkeley, the TH Marine prize, like, and share the Facebook fade feed for the TH Marine prize and make a donation to the camp quality link that JP high will be putting up on the screen. So with that being said, may I introduce the players in this game right here? He is the president of the Herb Brown Fan Club. <laughs> this guy right over here, he's going to Florida with an Aiken in his heart. That's true. Ne- next week, uh, he, he is my bud. He is the bearded wonder. He's a master Joe. He's got the master plan. He's got a handful of sugar, folks. Hey, he's a lucky man. Mm-hmm. He is Ryan Popcorn Whitaker. Yes. Yeah, he plays drums. He plays the freaking drums, man. I just stay in my lane, man. Yeah, stay in your lane, Ryan. That's all I do. Stay in your lane, Timmy. Stay right in it. Stay in your lane, Tim. Keep my bag full. Stay in my lane. <laughs> uh, this, 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 no, that, I hope somebody gets this. Man. So, I hope somebody I, it's is an inside joke, well. but you know yeah. what? We're laughing. That's yeah. all that matters. So, uh, hey, America's Sweetheart is here tonight, too. Uh, America's Sweetheart is, of course, J.P. High, the hip-hop fisherman. It's his birthday oh, every awesome. week. Every week here on Straight Cast. America's Sweetheart. America's yeah. Sweetheart, J.P. High. That's what everybody says about it. That's what everybody says. All the fan mail comes in for J.P. High. All the gals love him. I didn't, I didn't know. I just let you know. Thanks. Right, right here, right now. And, and this guy over here uh, who produces the hell out of this freaking show every week, he's Sarah and Gwen's papa, papa, papa. The voices in my head really bother him. He is the producer, hello. Hello. Andrew Ellenberger. Hello. 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 Andrew Ellenberger. Hey, uh, what better time than to put the power poles down? And let's kick this whole thing out. I'm going to get my kicks for this whole, this whole shit house goes up in flames. You know yeah. what I'm going to say? All right, put them down. We'll be back with Johnny Cox. up your game it has been said that professionals are only as good as the tools they work with and alpha angler has developed the ultimate set of tools for you the competitive angler alpha angler custom rods brought to fruition by the passion of master craftsman jake boomer and 2017 bass angler of the year brandon palanick alpha angler rods are custom made in the usa designed and engineered to be perfect. Alpha Angler utilizes a very unconventional approach to making the very best bass rods from drop shotting to flipping. Alpha Angler's focus is on building perfectly balanced tournament grade bass rods at an affordable price. Join the Alpha Lusion today and purchase direct at alphaangler.com. Step up your game, alphaangler.com. Hey guys, Micah Frazier here. I've got a bait from War Eagle Baits called the Buzz Toad. Big thing lately has been putting a toad style bait on a buzz bait and preferably it's my favorite way to fish one. 
Uh, this bait here's got a quick planing head, a great hook, and it squeals right out of the package. Uh, the, the body of this bait is big and bulky, so it allows you to skip it. It, it planes quicker than a skirted bait would. Um, in my opinion, it's just the way to, it's the way to fish a buzz bait. So y'all check this thing out. It's pretty awesome. Taming the beast isn't easy, but the bigger your electronics, the more you have on the line. In conditions like this, you need the KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. The only electronics mount designed and built to be rock solid. No movement, no matter how heavy your gear. A marine grade mount for fresh or salt water that's monstrously strong. The KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. Welcome back to Stray Cast, outdoor cartoon television. Hi. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. Football is a game of inches. Just as pornography can be a game of inches. <laughs> Bass fishing is also a game of inches. It can make or break a man. It can lift you up and it can bring you down. Our next guest has been exalted and lifted to the highest level of bass fishing excellence. His life changed in 2016. Ladies and gentlemen, we bring to you John Cox. Yes! 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 John! That, that was the best uh, intro ever, I, I have to say. Well, thank you. Thank you. I worked, I worked uh, not at all on that. The, <laughs> can, uh, can, hey, can you hit your video button? Because we can't see you. All I see, no, is, all I see is a blue icon that looks like the men's room. Um, <laughs> hold on. Let me, uh, <laughs> don't make me do that intro again. Here, here comes Johnny. There, there you are. John you, Cox. You can see me. I can see you now. Yeah, you look okay. amazing. Hey, what if I turn in this way? Can you see me now? That's yep. a, yeah. That's upside down. John yeah, Cox. Both oh, okay. yeah. You're acrobatic. It's awesome. Oh, no, you sure. look good. They're, they're oh, okay. Perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> How you feeling, oh. man? Oh man. Awesome. Awesome. I'm, I mean, I, you know, I was just, you know, been busy, but I mean, I'm just, you know, so happy to be back on the show and, uh, yeah. Dude, I'm not going to kid you. You are one of my favorite guests. I, I mean that sincerely. And I, I pick you you're to house win. Favorite. I pick you to win right. every tournament, even the ones that you're not in. Right. Like I, I was sitting around at the Bassmaster Classic with Ronnie Moore right. and I'm like, right. you know, who's going to win this thing, dude. Johnny Cox, my dude. Johnny Cox is gonna win, and he's like, right. and I thought it was like a unique pick, but he goes, right? You know, he's everyone's pick, Pat. <laughs> Ronnie Moore, slam, uh, thumb me yeah. down. Oh man, <laughs> yeah, I, I had a lot of people tell me they're like, man, you really sucked in that one. And I was like, man, I, I made the final day, but <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> but just... but as we know in the in the intro, that dramatic intro that you. <laughs> Are a Forest Wood Cup champion, dude. 2016. I, I still don't believe dude, that. Dude, you're you know? a piece of history. You're a piece of <laughs> bass <laughs> fishing history. <laughs> I know. It's unreal. I still don't. I mean, 
I get chills even just hearing that, you know? It's nuts. <laughs> Do you, I can't, I mean, I can't imagine it. I, I mean, obviously, no. I'm just a bass fishing talk show host, I well, and, and I catch a few fish, but. But, I mean, that's the same thing with me. I mean, I never imagined, uh, it, you know, I kind of thought, like, oh, maybe I'll get lucky one of the times, and then when it was actually going on, uh, you know, it was just, you know, it was unreal. Yeah. Do, you, do you ever have dreams of uh, Kotako Creek? Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, I, I, I honestly, like, it, it, that, I, that's welcome, welcome me up a few times, you know, when those fish were blowing up on that frog and setting the hook. and uh, Visions, you know. visions of duckweed. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I still, I, I mean, I, I enjoy them, but yeah, it does startle you, you know. And, <laughs> and I had, uh, I had uh, uh, flashbacks to uh to that uh that derby on wheeler that you won the the cup Mm -hmm. when hackney just won the sabine river oh i know i dude i i I was watching it live and the same thing i was like i felt like i was like i was like i've been there you know (laughs) know, it was a completely different place uh but it was just it was awesome to see him win that thing you know it was uh you know they did it brought back memories from it's the same the deal. Sure. Frog yep. in a buzz bait. Yep. Frog yep. in a buzz bait. Rotate. You if know? you were there, yep. there probably would have been two tin boats bouncing off him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and Bill, Billy Lowen one. and Greg yeah. Hackney yeah. have been battling it out, dude. Right. <laughs> <laughs> You've been battling it out. <laughs> so, I mean, oh. and I think there's a couple things that I, I want to bring to to the world's attention r- right away. Um, First off, you had a major life event in your family and you guys finally bought a television set that's a that's a big deal <laughs> I, I was trying to think i was like geez what happened you know, and, <laughs> yeah you know that I, I finally uh broke down and bought a big screen and um you know i haven't uh i've only watched one movie on it yet but uh you know i'm hoping to Maybe get cable one of these days. <laughs> <laughs> Stop the show a minute. Hold on a second. Uh, guys in the room, he's won all, almost $1.25 million bass fishing, and he finally just buys a television. Yeah. Set. What the hell is wrong I, with you? I, I, I he's out well, there I, fishing. I just, yeah, I, I'm never home. I mean, you know, and, and when I'm home, I mean, uh, we're, we're doing stuff. You know, we're fishing in the, we're fi- we fish in the backyard until it's, you know, hour after dark. I mean, we, we, it's just, you know, just like here, we're at Champlain this week. We're supposed to be taking it easy, no vacation. Man, we were up at five o'clock this morning, hit the lake. We've been going hard. I got in, I got in 10 minutes ago. You know, it's just, it's just going wide open. It's awesome. I guess if, if we are all of us out there had a pond in their backyard with nothing but six plus pound mm. bass in it we would probably not watch television either <laughs> right? i mean let's let's get let's it's get hard, real it's hard to it. get anything done over there. You <laughs> yeah, get yeah. over there it's just uh they just they suck you in my brother actually just moved in next door and uh and boy he gets he gets yelled at when he's out there and he's she's like get back in here I'm, like, oh, man, it's, uh, I'm going down else. there friday uh what's your address <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. On, there's no one there you can stop it they see <laughs> probably stay well, oh, open in you don't gotta tell him yeah. twice yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the voices in my head don't bother him he's right there <laughs> he, he's right there hey um and also i want to i want to bring to 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 the point right away that um what a cool deal that you and berkeley fishing are doing for the kids at camp quality illinois man oh yeah man i you know i i you know when we were talking about it the other day you know i mean that's just a uh it's just an awesome thing that they're putting on there and uh, yeah i mean if, if anybody you know if it, what were we gonna do if anybody donates during this show yeah um i'm gonna ship them a prize pack of uh some of the new Berkeley soft plastics. I there, got. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> the good, good. You know what I'm yeah, saying? It, that stuff too. I mean, it, uh, that's honestly consumed so much of my year this year is, is, is trying out so much of that stuff. And, uh, man, I'm telling you, it's just, it, it's awesome. I'm so glad, uh, you know, they brought me on and stuff. And, uh, um, yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm telling you, it's, it's changing, it's it's adding some baits to my arsenal i just never had before and, uh, nice you know it's it's exciting i mean i'm looking forward to you know the rest of this year and and uh definitely fo- you know looking forward to next year yeah yeah and the and uh J, jp high wants can to we, know about can we throw those top waters those new top waters in there no, oh, no, I, I got to hang on to those. Oh, come on. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. 
no. if, if they donate <laughs> enough to the kids. No, no I, got, I only got a few. Yeah. I got <laughs> I only got a few. <laughs> what about fifty grand? They donate right. fifty maybe, grand. Can they get some top? Maybe waters? after maybe after the cup, I might be able to uh, let go of one or two. Of them, <laughs> <laughs> if someone, if someone donates a thousand, you got to give up one of those. Top oh top man, yeah, I, I will after the cup. Okay. I'll send it. <laughs> <laughs> you see, wow, I'll, that's I'll a testimony. It sounds pretty good. I'll sign it and send it to him. Yeah. Yeah. If someone wants to do a thousand. Will you sign it, the handyman John Cox? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, handyman I'm actually stuff. gonna uh, break back into some of them skills here. Uh, once I get a break, I'm gonna. I think I'm gonna close in my garage, and uh, at least I'm gonna attempt it. You know, put the old <laughs> tool see. belt back on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's all, uh, that is awesome. But again, uh, thank, thanks again to you and to Berkeley. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, all you have to do is go to the link that JP High put up on the Facebook screen. Um, make a donation. Doesn't matter if it's a big or small donation. Your name will be chosen on a randomizer at the end of the program. And whoever wins, John Cox is going to send them a Berkeley Mega Pack. And if you donate a thousand <laughs> after the cup. Yeah, you get assigned new top water. There, Berkeley. there you go. Yeah. Right. <laughs> After the cup, we're gonna hold you to that. <laughs> <laughs> the uh, the cups. I mean, it's right here. It it seems. And I was thinking about this. It and it's this is not intentional, but we always seem to have you on on the cusp of a major event. Doesn't it seem like that? I mean, we. It it, it really does. I mean, that, I mean that's. I mean, yeah. I mean that's how it was last last time. The time before that. Um, you know, we did what we did one right before the, uh, classic and then, mm -hmm. yeah, um, it's, and I don't yeah. plan this shit. It just happens. I mean, I, I just like, <laughs> it I'm going to call, luck I'm going to call up yeah. John. I'm going to see right, what he's right. got going on. We haven't had him on in a while. We've right. had quite, we've had quite a few people win directly after they're on the show. Yes. So keep nice. that in mind. And we've well, had quite we a few we... people bomb horribly. That's too. happened too. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Crete, but yeah, I, I mean, didn't think Jeff you. Crete would ever yeah. talk to me again, but that's he's his own <laughs> demon right there. Oh man. <laughs> <laughs> he's his own oh. demon. He's learning. <laughs> <laughs> but the cup is a big deal. Um and in Wachita is is not a stranger to the Forest Wood Cup. I mean it how how are you feeling about it, John? I, I mean, I, I'm I'm looking forward to it. I mean, I think it's our uh, it'll be my third time there. Um, you know, and, and uh, the place it, we, it spreads out really nicely. Um, you know, there's grass in it. Um, you know, the the fish. Uh, um, you know, it's kind of the fish seem really aggressive there. I mean, you get um, you know you get some awesome topwater bites, and uh, and you can just kind of bounce around. You know, it's normally. I mean, I know one time Scott won. He won on them few uh, brush pile areas and stuff, and um, but like, I mean, you can move around. I mean, if I, it, what I like is if, if, if I just fish well, um, I'll have a shot, you know? So that's, that's kind of, sure. that's kind of why it's kind of exciting. <laughs> it, and I mean, in the, in the deal with, with the cup is it's, it is, it is probably it's, it's right in line. And I don't know how to phrase this, but there's the Bassmaster Classic and there's the Forest right. Wood Cup. I mean, let's yep. face it. That's those it. are, right. those are both the deal. In, in, right. co in competitive bass fishing, um, and and I did a little bit of um, a research on the uh, on the Forestwood Cup, of course, but before the show in um, and the amazing media pack provided by FLW. Thank you very much. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I didn't even realize this that they actually canceled the cup in two thousand and one. Yeah. Oh, I, because I didn't, yeah, I, because of the terrorist I was, attacks. Uh, I was a freshman in uh, high school, two thousand one. You were like, you're like, dude. I, I think the cup's going on, bro. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. You yeah. want to go out to the glades and wrestle some gators? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Have you ever done crazy um, things with alligators? Uh, I, I went alligator hunting one time, and uh, it was it was honestly it was. Uh, I don't know if I'm not redneck enough or what it is, but I just, uh, I don't know, man. It just wasn't, wasn't for me. <laughs> John, ask me if I've ever done anything crazy with alligators. Uh, have you ever done anything crazy with alligators? Well, John, it's funny that you ask me that because. <laughs> Didn't you used to live in Boca Raton? I used to live in Boca Raton, Florida. My, right. my, my right. whole crew here always harasses me about <laughs> that. I seem to bring right. it up all the time. I don't know. But right. anyway, we used to. 
we used to go to the to the Everglades, and this is highly illegal, and I don't condone right. this whatsoever. Right. But um, we had uh, we would we would go out there to Loxahatchee if you've right. ever, if you've heard of Loxahatchee. So we'd mm-hmm. go out there to Loxahatchee, and um, before we would go there, we'd go to Winn Dixie and buy whole chickens. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know where this is going, right? Oh, yeah. yeah. So we would take, <laughs> we'd get in the back of the pickup trucks with our Penn International saltwater stuff, and we would take a big 10 aught tuna hook and hook that chicken through there. Now, we did file the barb down off it, and we'd throw it off of the, off of the back of the pickup over there at Loxahatchee. There might have been some, some uh, adult beverages involved, I am not sure, or some foreign substances. I do not know that either. <laughs> Did not inhale, but what we would throw those off of the back of the truck, and we would use the pickup tailgate as a as a fighting chair, and just <laughs> and just get them in, dude. Gators <laughs> hopping on their backs, real dumb shit, John. Oh, dumb, dumb stuff. Did you grease up before you did that? No, no. no. <laughs> they say nobody wrestles an alligator when the camera's not on, but I did, and I I lived to tell about it. Thank God. Thank God. Enough about me, but what about me? Back to the show. <laughs> Serious question. How many big gulps do you drink in a month, do you think? Oh, my gosh. I, you know, I, on right before I got back to the hotel, I stopped at the gas station, and they did not have fountain drinks. What? And it just it just threw me off. I was like, wow, the day was so wonderful. And then that had to happen. What's wrong with New York? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so what did you do? Canada, I guess. I don't know. Did you get a Fanta? <laughs> do they have Fantas in New York? No, no, no I didn't. I didn't see those either. <laughs> <laughs> no fountain drinks at the gas station. I, that's unheard uh, of. I know. I walked in and I just walked out. I was like, forget it. See you guys later. JP saw yeah. a guy pull a pretty cool trick at the gas station right, right down the street here. He went in and, what, you want to tell it? Yeah, yeah, sure. He he went in, he filled up the cup about three or four times, and then just threw the cup out and walked out, and they went, sir, sir, and he went, no, it's no good. <laughs> oh, see, that actually does happen, though. Yes. Sometimes it just doesn't. It just doesn't come out right. Yeah, it's either too watery or too carbonated <laughs> yeah, or not carbonated like, enough. No, it yeah, was it like, was hot that day. He was really enjoying it. <laughs> was he? Uh, and he just he had no intention of paying. Oh, he drank <laughs> some actually. Oh, he drank like three oh, of them. Yeah. Oh, he drank he, them all. He filled it up oh. three times, chugged it, <laughs> and then just walked out. And they were like, "Sir," and he was like, "No good. <laughs> it's no good." <laughs> <laughs> I just tried three uh, of them. Uh, They're no good. He just tested it. <laughs> Right. He, he took the plunge. No, and I was like, "This is I'm going to start doing that." That guy's a, <laughs> yeah. guy's a genius. Yeah. Found a great genius. Hey, uh, FLW just changed the rule on co anglers. You see how I 360 it, and I I yeah, call the audible. Yeah. That's how. That's how you. Right that's how you yeah, stuff. that's how you bass fishing talk shit. Red seven. So, so you. The, so <laughs> FLW just changed the rule. No more co anglers. Um, three part question. How do you feel about it? Tell me a good co-angler story and tell me a bad co-angler story. Um, you know, I, I, I'm on the fence about it. I have a really good travel partner that travels with me, fishes as a co-angler. And, he, and, and there are good co-anglers that will respect your water. But, if, I mean, the thing is, too, is like they can be a great co-angler, but they're going to they gonna catch them behind you. <laughs> you know? So, I mean, but what I liked, I felt like it kept me on the, on my toes, you know? Okay. It was like, I need to catch everything because if not, that guy back there is going to catch him. So I kind of uh, liked him. I liked having my travel guy, um, you know, Benji. I mean, he's just a great dude. I mean, he's just always there. Like, you know, he'll drive the truck if I need to hurry up and get home to the kids and then show back up at the next tournament and let me fly in. And uh, that's I'm going to really miss that. But um. Uh, you know, I, I don't, I mean, I've, there's been so many different stories I can think. I mean, just, uh, you know, I, I mean, I've had them where even like my co-anglers would, uh, you know, I'd have a, a good one. He'd be back there helping me call and, you know, and like, uh, you know, cheering me on and stuff. And, you know, it was really nice. And then, uh, you know, I've also, I, I have taken some beatings <laughs> from a few, uh, That's horrible, partic- right? from a few particular co-anglers. And it's not just a one time. One time, go out there and, and take a beating. It's like when I get them, like I know 
as long as I catch close to what they're going to catch, you know, and then, yeah. you know, and then I'll, I'd be okay. But I have, I have taken some beating from some of them co-anglers, but I think it's helped me in the long run. You know, it's helped me tighten up a little bit. And, it makes you more of a uh, vacuum cleaner. You got to keep right, on it. Right. That's what, I mean, that's what I felt like. I felt like, you know, cause we're always trying to get better and stuff. And I, and another thing too, with those co-anglers, like some of them guys, I mean, they're like professional co-anglers. Like that's what they do. Right. You mm-hmm. know? And, um, you know, now that they're not going to have, uh, anything on that level, um, you know, a lot of them guys won't, won't be able to fish as boaters, you know, they, you know, it's, it's a different thing, you know, uh, sure. finding fish and, and catching fish, you know, and, um, they'll have to go do the so, coasters then, huh? I, I get, yeah. I just, I don't know. I, I mean, I don't feel like there's, I mean, I, I've, I've, I've had co-anglers in the coasters and co-anglers in the tour and, and the co-anglers and, you know, like Benji, I mean, Benji made decent money every year. You know, mm-hmm. um, I don't see him being able to make that kind of decent money in the Costas. Right, but it's just not there. No, no. So I mean, you know, someone that was making, uh, you know, on a good year, fifty thousand on co angler, and then you know, on having an okay year and making twenty. I mean, that's still, wow. uh, you know, you're not going to do that on the Costas. Yeah, that, that, I mean, that's Man, a that tough sucks. one. It's it's yeah. a tough call, but I I guess again, you know, it's. It's just this is the highest level of competitive right. bass fishing, FLW right. and BASS. And, right. I mean, you if you guys, the professional anglers, not professional right. co-anglers, the professional anglers, this is how you make your living. This is how you right. feed your families, how you pay your mortgage. Um, you have to <laughs> you have, you have to take the variables out. I, right. I, I agree with FLW's right. decision. That's my opinion. Right. That's my right. opinion. It's up for debate, but I mean that's just uh, <laughs> that's just what it is. Whatever, whatever that's worth, man. <laughs> um, the way that you practice mm-hmm. for derbies, I uh, I admire that. It seems like you, no matter. First off, no matter what, you're always smiling. You always right. got a smile on your face, which is is commendable, dude. And and it doesn't it doesn't seem like things ever bother you. Like, what is a pissed off John Cox like? Uh, you know, I mean, I, I guess, uh, um, <laughs> you know, stuff I've had to deal with in the past and stuff. Um, you know, I'm, I mean, if I'm out fishing every day, I mean, I'm, I'm happy, you know. So I just, uh, you know, I, I don't know. I, I try not to let anything get to me. And, you know, nothing surprises me anymore. So it's like, right. you know, when something comes up and I'm just like, oh, you know, <laughs> I'm just, you know knew it was you know figure something was going to happen and and uh and you know and that's the same thing with fishing is like uh you don't have much time to uh um fix whatever is going on or or uh or um uh try to make it better so you just like make the best of it and just roll with it you know and that's uh that's i mean that's pretty much how i live life so (laughs) i love it that's why i'm always smiling one moment at a time dude right one moment at a time yeah take a breath and start again that's it. That's the whole deal. I love that about you, man. The, uh, I, w- I want to talk to you about something. All the years I've known you, we've never had this discussion, discussion, mm-hmm. whether it been in a private setting or on this show. But right. I, I, I want to hear – bass boats are scary, dude. Yep. Bass boats are, are <laughs> scary animals. They, right. they, they need to be respected. Um, and things can go wrong in the in the in the in the flick of a switch dude and right. you, and you had a horrible experience in in 2015 man right um yeah we're... go ahead see smiling <laughs> no, about this that's I, amazing okay. I, I ran myself over I, I i ran myself over in the boat I had a one boat accident wow <laughs> you know and uh and that just i mean you you don't think anything like that's ever going to happen, you know? And I mean, and it, I mean, it, and it happens. I mean, you just, um, you know, um, you know, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I'm glad, I'm glad we don't have to fish out of, uh, FLW's boats anymore, uh, on the final day. I think that's helped me tremendously. You know, it's helped me, uh, sponsor wise everything, you know, cause and then, uh, on our final days, you know, the TV time we'd get and stuff. Uh, sure. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you just, I mean, you always got to have that kill. I mean, I don't know before that, I don't know how many times I would, uh, you know, be like, ah, I'm not going to hook the kill switch up, you know, like, you know, I'm, I'm jumping up and down constantly. I'm not going to hook it up. And that was just a reminder, you know, when I, uh, when I had the, uh, skag print on like my side and then somehow the prop got the inside of my leg to, to oh. know, 
to make sure you have that. Because, I mean, if it wouldn't have been cut off, you know, I mean, I can't even imagine if it was still going wide open what it would have done. I, I mean, I would have been dead. I, ex- you know? I yeah. mean, you are so I mean, fortunate. Done. And the yeah, reason- I, I, don't, I don't even know how, like, I was pulling the kids on the tube the other day, and I jumped in, and I'm, like, thinking, oh, I can climb back in the boat. You know, I, I ran myself over, and I jumped right in the back. Man, I, I struggled getting back <laughs> in that boat, and I have no idea <laughs> How I, I like I, when that happened, when I like when I kind of realized I was on the bottom and I like kind of woke up and I was like, oh, my gosh, I put my feet on the ground and I just jumped toward the surface and I, I just shot up over the uh, back of the deck. You know, it was unbelievable. You know, just so it's just, you know, adrenaline. Uh, yeah. yeah. And it was just and it was just it was luck because I mean, that le- I mean, Smith, Lake, it's it's a I mean, there's hundreds of feet of water all over that lake. And where I went out is like where a sandbar come off an island. You know, and luckily I didn't go, you know, because otherwise it would have been, you know. Because you were down at the bottom looking up, right? Yeah, I mean, I just, I woke up and I was just laying there. And and then I put my feet down and just jumped to the surface. That's crazy. Damn. Yeah, it was awful, man. Dude, you are so, you are fortunate, and I and I and I don't mean to dredge up, up the past, anything right. like that. I bring well, no, it I mean, up because of safety. Every, even everybody listening, I mean, it might. I mean, if one person hooks that switch up next time they go out from, you know, listen to the show, you know, that's that's great. I mean, I'll just, um, you know, everybody needs to be, a, you know, reminded of it. You know, that, that's the intent. Yeah, they're dangerous. Dude. That, that's yep. that's the intent, right, right mm-hmm. there, man. You uh, you're a rod geek. Just, just like me, dude. You, I mean, yep. you, you put a lot of thought <laughs> and a lot of process into the fishing rods that you choose, and, right. and obviously by your hat, you're you're with with MHX. You have the luxury mm-hmm. of making any rod that you would like. Yeah, I mean, I that that's you know with with all my sponsors, like you know, anytime I go and and decide to uh, you know be become a part of a company, you know, I, I make sure it's it's stuff I can actually use. And then, and then, and then stuff that the stuff's going to make me fish better, you know, and it's just, I'm just so fortunate, um, you know, with the companies I work for that. I, I mean, I, I mean, it's, you know, like I said, I, I can pick any blank I want and, and go through and, and, and get so dialed in on my rod building, you know, that it's just, it's just a whole nother, it just puts you on a whole nother level. It's a science. You know? and, it, it is. A yeah, science. it really is. And I, I mean, and I mean, and, 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 you know, some people, you know, they will just build and stuff, but like when you go and you start spacing the eyes differently and shortening handles for different techniques and, and, uh, you know, going with different actions to make that bait work, um, you know, differently, you know, because of the rod you're using. I mean, it's just, it, it, it's endless, you know, it. Um, you know, it's just, con- I'm, every time I build one, I learn something, you know, and it's, and it's just, uh, now he, so here, I, here's the trick question. Okay. Mm. Now, if you remember, um, it would have been in the early two thousands that, uh, when you were still a senior in, in high school, the, uh, that, that Rick, Cl- <laughs> Rick Clun had this right. theory that he yeah. would only use one rod for every technique and, right. and his, his thought process behind that theory was it's like shooting baskets right so you're shooting baskets and you get hot and you're sinking them every time right Right. somebody throws you a bitty ball and now it takes you a minute to get back in the groove right all right so rick one uh used a seven foot heavy action rod for every application right could you ever do anything like that (laughs) You know, I, I think back then I almost feel like we had to because there wasn't um, – I felt like – well, I, I, I didn't know there was – like now the way the way like my rods set up, they all feel almost identical. Um, they just will load differently, you know. Okay. And that's, I mean that, mm-hmm. that's – and that's the uh, uh, that's the thing that's so nice is that we have so many blanks that fall in between those, those uh, you know, different, uh, um, you know, angles that they would bend that, that – you, um, your fish, it feel when you pick up another rod, it feels just like the one you put down, but it's going to have either a little more backbone or it's going to have, but it's going to feel the same, you know? And that's, uh, um, you know, that's why, I mean, that's why I love it. I mean, everything, you know, so that is important. You, you got to have the equipment. I I feel like, yeah, because like when you, I mean, you got to think before I was with mud hole, I had, you know, I had like, uh, you know, I had some Shimano's, I had some, uh, Fenwick's, I had some, uh, um, uh, I just had, had a had a bunch of different rods. Hodgepodge, um, a plethora. Right, and they yeah. all felt different. You know, you'd pick one up and be like, "Oh man, it's really nice." And then you go to another one, you'd be like, "Oh," and you had to get kind of used to it again. You know, right? To where now you, I have, I build all the, you know, uh, I build them all where they feel so similar 
you know, I mean, my frog rod feels like, you know, it feels like just a regular worm, worm casting rod, you know, but and then it just has that, you know, more power to, you know, drive the hooks and pull them out of stuff. And, uh, I mean, it's just, it's awesome. It, I just, I, you I could go on. We could go, than, yeah, we, exactly. Yeah, we could go on. Go, you, you and I yeah, have had we, hours we, of conversations yeah, about hours. rods. We'll bore the hell out of everybody. Yeah, everybody. <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I <laughs> You know, talk about your rods in your free yeah, time. Yeah, right? yeah. <laughs> speaking of, uh, speaking of rods, here. let's play Just the Quick Tip. You want to play Just the Quick Tip? <laughs> All right. All right. So it's, a, it's, a, it's a new game show we got here. And, and what this is, John, is it's, it's I'm going to give you a word or a phrase, and you give us Just the Quick Tip. Okay. Okay. Are you ready? It's time for <laughs> Just the Quick Tip with Johnny Cox. <laughs> On straight cast. Johnny, <laughs> just the quick tip. Punching mats. Um. Uh, just a quick tip. What? Whoa, well, just when in doubt, flip them out. When in doubt, flip them out. Just a quick tip. <laughs> Spinning oh. rod. Spinning rod. Just a quick tip. Um. <laughs> um. Oh, Is God, this funny to you? <laughs> Spinning rod. I got. I don't know. I don't. <laughs> I got. I got nothing. I, what? I don't, line I, twist. I, yeah, li that line. I don't know. Jesus Christ. Uh, Getting up on plane quick. Just a quick tip. Getting up on plane uh, quick. Just blow it. Just blow it. <laughs> just blow it. Now you're playing. Good. Yeah. <laughs> side scan side scan oh man oh man just uh watch where you're going <laughs> this is going horribly wrong I, I, I haven't i not that i've crashed into anybody's dock before <laughs> no that's a good <laughs> tip idling around but i'm just saying it, it's it happens so you gotta watch where you're going don't get watch, sucked into yeah, that thing watch where you're going with yeah. scanning just a quick tip <laughs> that's a great that's a great tip <laughs> <laughs> Frog fishing, just the quick tip. Oh, uh, better I don't. Better have some Nyquil after your frog fishing, because you're not gonna sleep. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Last one. Culling, culling, just the quick culling. tip. Culling. Oh, um. Yeah. <laughs> Give him a give him a just, reject. Just Get, where's the button? That's the worst version of Justin. <laughs> John, what is wrong with you? I, I don't know. I'm just I don't know. I, I'm just draw, I drew a blank. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna give you a chance to redeem yourself. Are okay, you ready? I'm ready? Are you ready? I'm ready? Okay. We're gonna play a game now called Bass and Life. Bass and Life. Now you really need to think though. So take a minute. Okay. Remember how we talked about? All right, let me. I, so I I didn't have my soda earlier. Yeah. So I'm kind of. Yeah. Kind of on edge. <laughs> soda. That's right. He says it right. Soda. It's yeah. not pop. No. Uh -huh. Soda. So this is bass and life. Okay. Uh, and I'm gonna give you a word or phrase, and you relate it to bass fishing, and you relate it to life. Okay. All right. It's time for bass and life <laughs> with Forest Wood Cup champion John Cox. I'm your host Pat Renwick. And it's time for Bass and Life. Johnny, Bass and Life. Cliffhangers. Cliffhangers related to bass and related to life. Uh, cliffhangers and bass is when, you know, those bass are uh, hanging off that ledge. Uh, but they're just a little too far out where you can't catch them. Okay. Well, I can't catch them. Okay. <laughs> and how does that relate then, to life? Yeah, uh, And life, you know, you... Uh, <laughs> You just, uh, <laughs> I don't know, when you're hanging on, just don't jump. I <laughs> I don't <laughs> okay, now you're getting it. That was a warm-up one. That, that, was, a, that was a warm-up one. Uh, bass and life. Pussy footing. Pussy footing. <laughs> so uh, it, with bass, that would be, uh, you know, throwing your wacky rig Cinco around or your wacky rig general around, you know. There you go. <laughs> and then... Uh, <laughs> and life is when you're, uh, I, I guess when you're, uh, 
when you don't want to work, you're just laid up and being lazy, I guess. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> when, you, or when you don't want when you don't want to get out of bed and go practice. Not that, that's or, it. or when you don't want to give away the new Berkeley topwater bait. Yeah, that's it. 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 <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Pussy footing to me is when somebody like they get in my boat and and they're gonna drive, but they they don't quite get it into gear all the way, and it's like, <laughs> oh yeah, oh I hate that, I hate it. <laughs> Max scent, Max scent related to bass and life. Uh, uh, bass like the Max scent. I mean the, the, I mean they just they they do they eat it, and uh, and life don't don't fish with the Max scent all day. Without washing your hands before you go home to your <laughs> wife or girlfriend. <laughs> uh, familiar, familiar odor. <laughs> Bass and life. Donkey punch. Donkey punch. Oh, oh gosh. Um, uh, Bass is, I guess, it's when uh, you're flipping mats and and you're uh, and you miss one and your buddy flips in there and, and jacks that fish on you. That's, that's the donkey punch, all right. It sure okay. is. Tag team donkey. Punch. How about life? <laughs> and then uh, about life. Oh gosh. Um, about life's. Uh, <laughs> I guess that's when, uh, you know, <laughs> I guess when your buddy <laughs> pisses you off, you, you donkey punch. You hit him with the old <laughs> donkey punch. <laughs> Boom. I think we have a winner. He totally redeemed himself. Oh, man. Dang. Smiling John Cox. <laughs> totally redeemed yourself right there. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable, man. Um, well, we, uh, we thank you again for another appearance uh, on StrayCast. We wish you many dreams of Kotako Creek. We wish you more Forest <laughs> Wood Cup victories in your future. And, and most off, we wish you a happy life. A hundred percent, dude. A hundred percent. And I do want to thank you and Berkeley Fishing again for the mega prize pack that you are providing to uh, a, a donator of Camp Quality. So. Oh, yeah. That's awesome. Awesome. Uh, Thanks got, for having me on and everything. And uh, Anything you want to say before yeah. we fly? Uh, I, I mean, just thanks for having me on. And, uh, you know, hope everybody... Um, uh, goes ahead and donate some money and I'll get them prize packs out and uh, yeah just can't wait for the next time maybe we'll maybe we'll be on here talking about the cup yeah I, I sure yeah. hope so and we'll see you in uh, a couple weeks at the cup <laughs> all right that's all right good. take take care Johnny Thanks. that's right. John there Cox right there boom always one of my favorites absolutely one yes. of my favorites on this show hundred percent favorite uh, he is he is he's like the house band yes it, it, it's awesome hey um remind you again if you're just tuning in you have a chance to win two prizes here uh fifty dollar th marine prize pack um all you have to do is like and share the facebook feed second off um courtesy of john cox and berkeley fishing is the berkeley mega prize pack all you have to do is go to the link that jp high provided on the facebook feed Make a donation, big or small, it doesn't matter. You will be chosen randomly at the end of the show. Nicole Dorr, Bass Fishing Supermodel, will let us know both winners at the end of the show. Stay tuned. Put the power poles down. Brandon Cobb, he's up next. faster and holds it more securely than power pole shallow water anchors some folks hear power pole and think oh man i can't afford that but did you know you can get the eight foot power pole sportsman 2 hydraulic anchor now with sea monster 2.0 pump and heavy duty hydraulic hose for just 1295 dollars it's got all the features power pole anchors are famous for and a single sportsman 2 will hold a bass boat up to 4500 pounds go check it out at power-pole.com to find a dealer near you power pole swift silent Secure. The swim jig technique is one of the most successful ways to put fish in the boat. Time in and time out, Bravani bait swim jigs are just the right tool for the job. Beaming with quality, the Bravani swim jigs come in a myriad of colors, feature the best premium hooks and solid trailer keepers to give you, the serious bass angler, the confidence you need to accomplish your goal of putting more fish in the boat. So go to BravaniBaits.com and start climbing the ladder to swim jig success. Taming the beast isn't easy, but the bigger your electronics, the more you have on the line. 
In conditions like this, you need the KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. The only electronics mount designed and built to be rock solid. No movement, no matter how heavy your gear. A marine grade mount for fresh or salt water that's monstrously strong. The KVD Kong Extreme Electronics Mount. Welcome back. Welcome back. It's the next segment here on Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. I am uh, your host, Pat Renwick, and uh, I'm super excited to have on the show for the first time ever as a featured guest. Give a warm studio audience round of applause for the one and only Brandon Cobb. Yeah. Yeah, bud. Internet high five right there. Internet high five. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what's going on dude oh not much all right. thank you all for having me on oh it, it's our pleasure are you in the tackle room right now i'm in the tackle room but it's pretty bad i just took everything out my boat after st Clair, and it is everywhere <laughs> it's scattered it's everywhere is there... i'm not gonna find anything next time i get ready to go <laughs> is there a bunch <laughs> of like goby uh de- like uh like deteriorating gobies and crawfish shells everywhere Probably all kind of scent because apparently you're supposed to use that for small mouse. I don't know because I don't know anything about small mouse, but there's stuff. <laughs> it's all over the place. What yeah. what did you think of that St. Clair, dude? It was unbelievable. I don't even know what I'm doing fishing for small mouse because we don't have small mouse in South Carolina, obviously. Right, but, right. Uh, it was like my first true small mouse fishing, but it was absolutely unreal. I mean, a three pounder was nothing. Dude, and it's it's so hard to like stop catching three pounders even though you know they're not gonna do you any good i mean how hard is that yeah well that was my problem i mean you caught fish i mean i'm not saying you caught fish anywhere you went but you caught fish most of the places you went and it's hard to tell like are these all three pounders or are these some threes with fours are they all fours it's hard to tell I, that was my biggest problem yeah, yeah. it was uh I mean, you just don't know. <laughs> you gotta catch twenty of them and find out. <laughs> you just don't know, man. Hey, I did everything and did what I could. <laughs> Dude, you um, you uh, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna sugarcoat it here. You are one of the choices for the cup dude you are 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 uh, uh, what what do you call that? You're one of the top picks. The top pick. You're one of the top picks. Yeah. Uh, for Washita, he's a high C. Half Cherokee in Washita. How do you how do you feel about that, dude? <laughs> well, I mean, I guess I'm a top pick because I did well at Washita one time, and I've had success in the cups. The one thing about Washita is though, it's not an easy place to fish. Not that it's a bad fishery, but you just are gonna catch. I mean, on a good day, you're gonna catch seven or eight. And on a bad day, you might catch two. And last time I was there, I caught seven or eight every day. So I had a good bag. Okay. But you could catch two just as easy. Yeah. It, it ain't going to be cold either. Yeah, that, that's for sure. I mean, but but let's think about this. Not only the fact that you are, are a favorite uh, by the uh, the consensus for the Forcewood Cup coming up here in a couple weeks. But th- the fact of the matter is, let's take all that out of the equation. How old are you, 29? I'm 28. 28. Okay, sorry. I aged you a year. So you're, <laughs> you're, you're 28 years old, and you are a professional bass fisherman, dude. Did, Some, I don't feel like one all the time. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, let's think about this. You are living the dream of, 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 of so many young people your age right now. I mean, you've, you've been at this. How many, so how many years have you been fishing derbies? Like four or five years? Is that what the deal is, five years? I fished the two five years but i started fishing well i fished tournaments by myself from the time i was like 13 but i started fishing bfls as a boater which is kind of what led me to where i am now i started fishing bfls as a boater when i was 16 okay wow. so, but five years as a touring pro not five years yep this is my this was my fifth season as a touring pro fourth full season but fifth fifth year i mean and, and here we're gonna break it down again dude 2015 the cup you came in third at watch all right mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, 16, 
ninth place at Wheeler. Um, and last year on Murray, third place again. Jeez. I mean, <laughs> dude. Pretty, pretty good run. That, that's not bad. $400,000 plus dollars in your FLW career so far for a 28-year-old dude that gets to fish whenever the hell he wants to. It's a pretty <laughs> cool deal. Now, yeah, Glenn, it's, now it's Grant, awesome. yeah, I, I mean, and I know, believe me, I always say it, bassing ain't easy, just like pimping. You know what I mean? But but you, it's it's something that, so you there is the, the, the downside and the bad side, but, I mean, dude, you're a professional bass fisherman. It's crazy. It took me about two years to actually realize that. Like for two years, I just felt like I was, you know, it was like I grew up fishing BFLs and stuff. It took me a while to realize like I've actually kind of made it. Like after my first time I did good at the cup, it was like the first time that I realized like I might actually, you know, be able to do this thing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and what a way to make a living. And, and, yeah. and, of, and of course, you, you know, you, you have a great tournament record so far. And you're doing yeah. really a great job with your sponsors too, which is the 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 other side. Of, that's the flip of the coin, right there too. Thank being you. able to promote for your sponsors. Um, that's right. That's the one deal I'm still learning. That's something that you don't you don't understand until you do it. You see all these like growing up, I saw Kevin Van Dam and Swindle and all them like representing their sponsors and fishing the tour and everything. You don't understand like the backside of the tour and everything until you actually do it. There's a, there's so mm -hmm. much more that goes into it than you realize. It's not just fishing. Yeah, it's like you just get a call from this hippie, and he's like, hey, you want to do my bass fishing talk show? And you're like, ah, shit, I got to do this now because it's part of my job. I right? know you should have no. called yourself a hippie there. I yeah. I'd be honest, I was kind of jealous. Y'all have Shane on all the time, and I, I was felt and left out. <laughs> we no, got man. Shane and Justin on. To, you know, we can't leave the third musketeer out. So know, that, that that's – that's why we got you. I mean, that, that bottom line, we wanted to have you as a featured guest, sincerely. Um, no, no doubt about it. So here's what I want to ask you. Um, describe to those viewing out there exactly what it's like, or let's say what is the definition of a professional bass fisherman? What's the definition of a professional bass fisherman to you, Brandon? The definition of professional bass fisherman to me is, I mean, the th I'll say what I feel like defines me as a professional fisherman is like the mentality and never giving up. Like it's professional fishing is not like fishing at home. You go fishing every day at home and you don't catch anything. Like, oh man, I should go try it again tomorrow. Well, it's different. Like you can't give up. You are doing it for a living. It just adds a whole new level to it. It's the best job you could ever have, but it just, it's, I, I don't know how to explain it, but it's something like I, I, I feel completely different fishing a tour level tournament versus just going fishing, but in a good way. I, I got you. Uh, yeah. And, and that makes perfect sense. And, and, um, it, it's a great job and it also is a job, but here's it's what here, this is what I'd like your opinion on. You, okay. you are a professional bass angler. Okay. Stating the obvious again, but there are so many people that we see these days that claim that they are professional bass fishermen. How, yes. how does that, how does that make you as really being a professional bass singer? How does that make you feel? Yeah, it, it, it's getting kind of crazy with all that stuff that goes on. I mean, to me, to be a professional bass fisherman, I consider you have to make your living or at least a bulk of your living off the tour tournament trail which is what I do. I, for a while I did work as a supplement because I didn't have the sponsors. I was doing it on my own, Right. but you have to make a bulk of your living off the professional tournament trail. Like I see a lot of these guys, I mean, that they, they don't, they work jobs. They work, they have full-time jobs yet. They travel to fish a tournament and then they have all these sponsors that they say they need, or they, they couldn't do it without their sponsors. Well, I truly couldn't do it without my sponsors. I love my sponsors. I represent them as best as I can. But a lot of these guys, they're just doing it, but not doing it for a living. Right. Right. And 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 people that don't even fish tournaments yet have a a Facebook uh, page that says uh, uh, Herb Brown, professional angler. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, like, what what 
what well, that doesn't doesn't that irritate you as a professional fisherman? It, it drives me crazy, and it's diluting the professional industry because a lot of these yeah. people, a lot of these sponsors, they don't know any different. They want to represent somebody in the professional industry, and if Johnny that fishes Tuesday nighters <laughs> comes to him and says, "I'm a professional fisherman. I caught 26 pounds last week." A lot of people that aren't the non-endemic type people to the fishing industry, they don't know any different. Right. And like I was telling somebody the other day, when I was growing up, I was 16, 17 years old fishing BFLs. I didn't ever even think to have a sponsor fishing BFLs or anything like that, even when I started fishing the Opens, because it wasn't a thing then. When I was 16, 17, 18 years old, nobody did. That wasn't that wasn't even thought of. The pros had sponsors, and if you fish, you fish to get the pros so you could get sponsors. And you don't, and you nailed it too. And you don't necessarily need a sponsor to fish local tournaments. I mean, who that, do you need yeah, the ten dollars in gas locally. to get to yeah. the boat ramp? You know, that, that's that's the right. Big thing you for can't me. fish locally. You don't need to be doing it. Yeah, it, right. Exactly. Right. It, it's nuts, man. Um, you are a uh, a very perseverant angler. I I've noticed that about you. You seem to excel. When conditions are tough, you actually thrive on that, especially summertime fishing. Summertime fish are baffling, okay? Let's let's be real about it. Summertime yep. fish are baffling. What is g- give us some tips or clue us in on on how you you stay so persistent and persevere when it comes to only getting a few bites a day, especially in the summer. Well, a lot of that summertime mentality, it, to me it's not a technique, it's not a pattern summer fish are to me they're not patternable they have in the in spring they're moving to spawn in the fall they're moving to eat for the winter well summertime they're not moving anywhere <laughs> they're just yeah. being summertime fish right so me, the mentality you're not looking for a school of fish i always am looking for a bass and i actually just spoke to at the coast of high school uh bass class last week okay I'm speaking about this in the summertime, in summertime fishing, I'm not talking about pre or immediate postponed summertime when they're biting still. I'm talking August, no more fish to catch, terrible conditions. You are looking for a bass, and it doesn't have to be. You're not looking to fish down this bank. Like, oh, I bet they stage up here or they move here. No, like, oh, I see a stump. I bet I can catch a bass off that. Yeah, you're looking for one at a time. One, one bass at a time. Kind of, yeah, one fish at a time. And it actually helped me though. I was kind of fortunate where I live here in South Carolina. Not that our lakes are bad, but we don't have a lot of fish in any one area. So you're almost always looking for that. Gotcha. You're trying to cover water and catch one at a time. And it's very similar to August fishing on most of the country, other than you got grass or something like that. That's a little different. But your typical August fisheries. I really wish we would have had this interview on Friday yeah. last week. Well, that would have helped you mentally. That would have helped a lot. See what I did for you? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. You nailed it, man. Uh, hard to pattern them. It, it is. It, summertime fish are weird. It's so easy, and I say this all the time on the show, Brandon, whenever I'm out fishing and I start thinking about what's for dinner, I'm done. That's my day. I'm done. I mean, it, <laughs> but, but you, you have to realize that, that those bites, again, so obvious but they can come anytime and, and you have to be ready for those bites dude and 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 and, and, and just like yeah i mean we have a saying here that um that we stole from mike iconelli and we we usually yell don't stop trying and that's our saying here and then he stole it from us and did never give up but whatever that's a whole other show we'll get into that at another time but that's the whole deal when you're out on on the water man especially in the summer it's easy to get frustrated but once you figure a thing or two out and you get those couple bites it changes you up here you know what i'm saying that's right it does and you're not like me i'm not even looking for a place to catch them like when i'm practicing in august i'm not like oh i think i found a good area generally i'm looking for something like oh had a few bites on horny toad, buzz bait, something like I like to throw that. So I had a couple bites on it. I think I can get five bites by the end of the day. I don't care where I fish. I'll just throw a buzz bait all day and look for stuff that looks good as I go. Right. So is is summer the season of junk fishing? It is. Yeah. Yeah. Especially like, I mean, maybe not. Like early summer and late summer, it kind of changes a little bit. But yeah, when it's like that typical what we're talking about, dog days, yeah, it's junk fishing. I mean, if you run across something you think you can catch a fish off of you better fish it. <laughs> do you subscribe to the theory that there's always a 
limit of fish or a winning bag of fish shallow? You don't always have to go deep in the summer? Yes. I, well, I, I don't think there's always a winning bag shallow, but at like some lakes it's just not. But I think there's always, I've kind of based my career off of it. I can always do well enough to sustain my points and get a check shallow. And that's always my go-to. And then I'll spend, I'll spend majority of my practice looking for that magical deep or something weird. Okay. But yeah, just shallow jump fishing and power fishing is, you can get a check doing that about anywhere you go. Very rarely can you not. Did you ever, um, did you ever hear Scott Suggs talk about thermoclines in the summer? I have. I've, I've heard, I don't know if I heard Scott Suggs, but I've, read a lot and seen a lot about them. Yeah, Suggs blew our mind a, a yeah. couple weeks ago or a month ago. He's like a thermocline scientist. Yeah, dude. I was like, wow. It, it may Because cause basically my depth finder is is my eight-foot flip and stick is what is what I use, okay? Uh, but Suggs, like, it was like, dude, find this thermocline. And it was like it was like Field of Dreams. Build it and they shall come. You know what I mean? Do you, do you apply that to your summertime fishing thermocline, especially in those Carolina lakes? Yeah, I want see a lot of our lakes. They don't have flow. We don't. They generate power, but not to the extent like a TVA lake does. So we get a hardcore thermocline, and it'll start moving up and up as the summer gets hotter and we get less water flow. And once I start seeing a heavy thermocline set up, you're definitely not catching a fish deeper than a thermocline. But okay. once I start seeing that, what I imagine like the fish when that starts happening, a lot of fish still stay deep and they just stay above the thermocline. But I imagine every fish in the lake they start pulling up, right? And some pull to the bank, which you can catch. But then those offshore fish, they pull up, but they're in 30 foot of water and they pull up to 10. And you don't want to be trying to fish for a fish in 10 foot of water and 30 foot of water. Yeah, that's lake. crazy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So most of the fish, I think, when that thermocline starts setting, they go to the bank. Or not most of them, but the catchable ones. They go to the bank. I've caught fish shallower in late July and August than I have the entire year because they're trying to get to that better water where they can breathe. Gotcha. The hotter it gets, the better, generally. What is your home lake in, in South Carolina? Um, Hartwell is my home, like, big tournament class lake. I got a little lake near my house called Lake Greenwood that's awesome shallow fishing lake. But sure. Hartwell is my close, like, tournament class lake. Gotcha. Gotcha. So Greenwood's good. Greenwood, can, it, it's good or bad. I mean, it takes – that. that's like a prime example of thermocline setting up. Everybody fishes brush piles on Greenwood. Deep, like, drag and worm, big crankbait, like, plant, plant brush piles and fish those. Well, early summer, like June up till early July, it takes almost 30 pounds to win night tournaments. Wow. And then now, like as of the last two or three weeks, once the thermocline started setting up and those fish pulled back out of the brush, it's taken six to 11 pounds. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> it's quite a difference. Some some family members of mine just bought some property on Greenwood, and they're actually building on, on Greenwood. So I'm, I'm looking yeah. for, forward to trying it. So that that's – like the thermocline show big time okay i'm gonna have to learn about thermoclines then more yeah before i get out there or just stay shallow <laughs> like you will back to being a prof yeah exactly <laughs> back to being a professional bass fisherman um if you had to take entry fees and put them aside what do you think it costs you per derby as a professional bass fisherman now i'm not asking you what your sponsors pay or anything like that but just trying to put a month. What's that? What are the expenses, basically, yeah. I have? Aside from baits and stuff, just my travel, stay, and stuff like that. Sure. Yep. Yeah, well, that proportion gets blown out of the water. I hear people say, oh, you need 70 grand to travel and all that. Not true. In my opinion, it's not. I travel with Shane and Justin. We split rooms and everything like that. We, we try to eat, you know, rel relatively easily, like quick or cheap meals. I would say we probably spend between gas and hotels and everything. We probably spend less than twenty five hundred a tournament, mm -hmm. two thousand a tournament, seven tournaments, and that's probably heavy side. Like if I spend a lot at a tournament, like we're at a high cost living area and things like that, then it's probably twenty five hundred. You're saying twenty five hundred each, each derby, each tournament, yeah, each per person tournament. too. Yeah. Uh, yes, each person, and a lot of times, I mean. Some lakes, I might use one tank of gas for three days of practice because I'll just trailer to the ramps I want to go to. In my truck, I'll stay on one tank all week. So a lot of times, I might not spend three to 500 on a house between after we split it and then another four or 500 in gas, and that's it. So sometimes it's probably 1,000 or less. 
Yeah. Yeah. So that is a grave misconception that there is seventy thousand dollars just to fish without sponsor money and w- without entry fees. It's crazy. I mean, I guess you could. I mean, it could cost that if you weren't if you're staying by yourself and trying to rent a house every time. But you got you got to find good buddies you travel with with things like that. Don't go eat out every night. We cook. We bring a crock pot. And we'll throw a roast in that morning, set it on time. We get done. We got we got a roast done, and we spent sixty dollars or fifty dollars on dinner for two nights. So I just got nice. a text from Skeet Reese. He pays one hundred and twenty five thousand a year in travel expenses. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I guess it's doable when they travel. Like we do, but I, they, they do. <laughs> that's, I just made that up. That's it. That that's truck's got to be pretty good on gas. Though. Yeah, it's Skeet that monster truck. truck. Well, he has a hot tub in every room. Yeah, and oh, in the yeah. truck. Yeah, that 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 no. that's the, that's the deal. Pedicures it. are expensive. <laughs> you looking for? I spent more than fifteen grand a year traveling. I'd be broke. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> you you'd be selling them Zoom baits on the side. I would. I would. All these rods behind me wouldn't be there if that was the case. <laughs> <laughs> you got some new sponsors this year too, man. Congratulations on uh, on that happening, bro. Yeah, it's been it's been good. I've, I've actually I think I got one or two new ones this year, but I've kind of built some relationships, with some I had. And it's been it's been good. I, all my sponsors, I kind of a lot of them, I became as much friends as they are my sponsors. So I enjoy working for all of them. It's all it's been awesome. You know how certain anglers become synonymous with certain sponsors? Like if you think of Kevin Van Dam, you probably think of like Bass Pro Shops or Quantum or something, right? I mean, are you, are you, are you, are you, you know, Aaron Martins, I used to feel that he was synonymous with Mega Bass, you know, ba- back in the day. If, if you wanted to be known or synonymous with a certain sponsor brand, what, what do you think that would be, Brandon? What would be your brand? I, I feel like because I've been with him so long, I've made my name with Yozuri. I think a lot of people will see Yozuri Pro and they consider me Yozuri. But I've actually, over the last year, it's a new company, so people don't understand. But Yozuri and Arc Rods is my two. I mean, that's ones we've worked together for a couple of years now, and we've built real good relationships. Yeah, and uh, and definitely that Yozuri is what came to my mind with you. That's, I mean, that, I was, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's working. It's working. There's the deal right there, man. Hey, um, we uh, we play game shows on this show you you know that right yeah we we play bass fishing game shows james told me y'all do all kind of stuff so i don't know what what could go down here don't believe it but believe all of it okay that's the only <laughs> advice i have for you so um did do you have a pen and paper handy by any chance i do well look at this look at these yapkas yapkas means apples in polish so okay well, <laughs> spoon box here okay. the spoon box has been sitting here for three years never been used it's it, it's a <laughs> Uh, you're supposed to say it's a box full of Yazuri rattling vibes. I'll have the paint knocked off. <laughs> okay, I need you to write these names down. Are you ready? I'm ready. Greg Hackney. Tell me when to go. All right. Jacob Wheeler. All right. Justin Atkins. All right. Scott Martin. Anthony right. Gagliardi. Right. And Scott Suggs. Scott Suggs. That's, uh... Yes. Okay. We are going to play a game called Match Em Up. Okay? And right. you need to give me... The answer in because th- we're deducting points here, okay? All right. we're, 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 and you will get back charged for this. Just letting you know. All right. Okay. You're either going to win a giant prize or you're going to get back charged. It, it, it's amazing what we have going on here. Okay. That's a true story I just made up right there. I promise. So here's the deal. It's called match them up. I'm going to give you some Forest Wood Cup history, and you match it up with these anglers. This could be true or this could not be true. That's the fun of this game. Okay. Are you ready? Let's play. Here we go. It's time to match them up with Brandon Cobb on Straight Cast. I'm your host, Pat Renwick. Let's match them up.
Brandon, this FLW champion conquered three rivers, Godzilla, and is said to have 27 unconfirmed Sasquatch kills. Match him up. Who is this angler? Greg Hackney. That is Greg Hackney. That is correct. Yes. Good job. Scratching off Greg Hackney there. You had me confused when you said Sasquatch kills, and when you said that, I knew immediately. It, it was, it was the hack. It was hack attack. No doubt about it. This cup champion's face is rumored to be made of stone until that rumor was crushed by his illuminous smile after winning the Forestwood Cup. Let me give you a little more specific here. Let's say Scott Martin. No, 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 no. I'm going to give you another chance. I don't want to buzz you yet here. <laughs> Can I help you? I totally screwed that one up. Uh, the, uh, I'm giving you that one. It's Anthony Gagliardi. Anthony, uh, good, good job. Good Anthony, job. <laughs> his face is not made of stone after all, Brandon. Thank God. That was a little vague. I'm not going to lie. Yeah, no, it was I I couldn't read my writing on the rest of the question. I screwed it up. I'm I'm not going to lie to you there. This fisherman has a boat. This <laughs> This fisherman fishes for bass. Who is it? No. The uh, Brandon This 2017 Forest Wood Cup champion allegedly put you into a hobbling accident weeks prior to the event in an attempt to take you out of contention for the tournament. I think we're going to say Justin on that one. It's Justin Atkins. Yeah. Yes, he actually broke your foot so you wouldn't win the tournament. Great friend he is. Great friend, Justin. Pull the you Harding on you. Way to go. Way to go. Uh, okay. This uh, 2011 Forest Wood Cup champion attributes the motivation for winning the event from channeling the pain that he felt when he was rejected and did not get a casting call back for the remake of Miami Vice. Scott. That is Scott Martin. That is Scott <laughs> Roland Martin. That is correct. You are knocking him out. The golden boy. Yeah, he is the golden boy. Scott yeah. Roland Martin. Scott Roland Don't Martin. I'm ready. I'm ready for it. What do I got left? Who do, who do I got left? Help me out. I'm a terrible game show. Wilson, Jacob Wheeler and Scott Suck. Oh, yes. yes. Okay. Here we go. This winner of the first million dollar cup is All right, got Scott Suck. Yeah, but he is. This is true, though. He's rumored to still have that million dollars buried under his trailer at, at Lake Wachita. That is true. He probably, he'd already won so much before, he wasn't worried about it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just put that away for a rainy day. Exactly. This is the process of elimination. So this is your bonus round question uh, for an unsubstantial amount of prizes that's absolutely valued at nothing. Here is the final question. This Forest Wood Cup champion is rumored to be the illegitimate love child of Joe Thomas. Jacob Wheeler. That is Jacob Wheeler. You did it. Brandon Cobb knocked it out. Knocked it out. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Did you know that about Jacob? I did not know that. Yeah. It's a true story. Another one I just made up right there. Oh, there. Dark. <laughs> I don't even know what you just said. It cut out, but it looked good. <laughs> <laughs> hey, um, Dude, thank you so much for, for coming on the show. We, anything you want to say to your fans or sponsors before we get the hell out of here? Just want to say thank you for everybody for following me and watch me at the Cup this year. I'm trying to pull one out for everybody. Yeah, dude, I like it. I like it. And we'll see you down there uh, in a couple weeks. And when um, when I interview you, we'll talk nothing about fishing but only about the movie Step Brothers, okay? Sounds good to me. I'm ready to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Brandon, thank you so much, man. We'd love to have you on again soon, dude. All right. Thank you for having me. Look forward to it. That is Brandon Thanks, Cobb right there. That dude's awesome right there. Hey, uh, th this is the time. Now, don't forget, you still have uh, a chance uh, to win the TH Marine Prize. Um, Like and share.
the live Facebook feed if you haven't done so already and you are in contention for the $50 TH Marine prize pack giveaway and the big one, the big, big This deal. is a big one. This is a big one. Is it uh, a phone? Huh? The, the, the big one here is that you need – I can't throw my phone. The, throw your phone. The, the big one here is that you need to donate to the Camp Quality website, okay, that is provided on the Facebook feed, and then you have a chance to win the mega prize pack from Berkeley Fishing and John Cox. There you go. Boom. Chakalaka boom. Now – we bring to you uh, for the first time ever. What is going on? I had to text you. I don't have your number. <laughs> oh, uh, oh, I sent it to you guys. Yeah, you, you and JP, you guys have the number. All right, what is going on around here? JP? Oh, I got J- JP? It's under control. What's JP, up? fire Andy. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> See how he got, Andy got mad when I did that? My voice in my head is bothering him again. Or was that out loud? <laughs> we are now bringing to you for a uh, first time ever on this show, ladies and gentlemen, Jasmine Renwick. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Wow. Look at you. What's up? Hi, guys. How you doing? You know, I'm good. Watching this show. And this is the first time I've actually seen the entire show. Wow. Wow. It's so Can't unfortunate lie. for you. I loved it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Did I just see Stevie Nicks in the background? That would be the Wonder Dog. That's my that's that is my granddaughter right there, Stevie Nicks. Grand dog. Grand dog. Fish and gypsy, gypsy dog, you name it. <laughs> there you it need is. A, you need a gerbil named Mick Fleetwood. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Gere has one named <laughs> Mick Fleetwood, but <laughs> that's urban I think legend. That's James Brown. That's <laughs> getting a hot tub. I can't keep up. I don't. Know. I don't. You know how it is with me, honey. You, you know. <laughs> We're making a lot of you know. references here. The, uh, <laughs> but hey, it's it's uh, it's awesome to have you on uh, this show for the first time ever, and um, you're here for a very special reason please tell us about it tell us thank you so much for having me um of course i'm here to talk about camp quality um a huge shout out first to john cox that's awesome that he's given away that awesome berkeley pack to people that are donating today um your best fish and supermodel is going to have the winner soon right yes yes i know all the lingo i could keep up just fine (laughs) (laughs) so yeah so camp um my dog is a dog so, <laughs> but Camp Quality is a week-long camp for children with cancer. Um, a lot of these kids are um, coming here to forget about that they even have cancer. It's letting can- kids with cancer be kids again. So this is 100% free to these children and their families, kind of offset all those medical bills that they have to deal with, unfortunately. Um, some kids are still sick. Some kids are in remission. Um, a lot of my best friends from camp now were campers, are cancer survivors. They're my best friends today that I met through Camp Quality. Um, so you guys have been plugging that link so well. Everything helps. One dollar, one million thousand quadrillion dollars. <laughs> yes. You know, you name it. Um, there's a lot of different things that a donation can cover too. Um, Just to kind of put it in perspective, just a $10 donation can purchase some craft supplies that we use all week. Um, A $20 covers the cost of a camper's one night, just one camper, one night, staying at the grounds that we use in Frankfurt, Illinois. Um, A $25 donation can purchase the logo gift that we give out every year, Um, and so on and so forth. You know, I, I I think it's great being all fundraising based we touch out everywhere we can. I don't know. No, that's awesome. no, that that's that's <laughs> that's bass fishing talk show sign language for hey guys, give me my phone back. That's producer sign language. <laughs> <laughs> but no, in in and seriously, I think the main point here is that um, this is a special place, for lack of a better way to put it. It's a special place for for these kids. It, it's remarkable. It's a, it's a break from the hell. Uh, and I don't know how else to put it. 
Yeah, I mean, you've been there, you've experienced it. Um, so a little what I do for these kids is our family, well, our chosen family here that we have, um, have been running this organization for 25 years in Illinois. Um, and then, you know, we were lucky enough to help them with behind the scenes stuff until I was able to be on. So what I do all week is I'm what's called a companion. So with these children, instead of like one counselor for five kids, it's all one-on-one -on -one, 24 seven. So I'm matched with one camper. Um, my camper this year is Neve. Shout out to Neve. Um, <laughs> she said she was going to watch, so we'll see. <laughs> um, so I just hang out with them all week and they just drag me around and it's, and it's the best because they're having the time of their life. It's, it's outstanding. And, um, and, and Ryan and I will be there, uh, we're coming. We'll, yeah, we'll be there Monday and we're, uh, with Larry, with big Lair and, uh, and Jen Berg will be there, awesome. uh, working the ice cream tent. I love it. Yeah, but we do too. We, we're not going to kid you. We like the ice cream. There yeah. Too. It is when awesome. Says ice cream tent. That's, like I said, everything is free for these kids. So that's also a huge donation. Dairy Queen is a big sponsor of it, too. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, along with a lot of other things that supply, the, the money supplies, the ice creams, cups, spoons, the ice cream itself, the volunteer help. A lot of these volunteers, they take time off of work. A lot of people get PTO, but, like, I call off for a week because I want to be there, you know? it's It's time. It's money. It's help. It's you name it, everything goes into this camp. And the deal is it helps the kids forget or try to forget for a week that they're dealing with cancer. I don't, I don't and just know. Just have how, a good time. Yeah. And have a good time. I don't know yeah. how, how else a plain way to put it. Um, again, if you're just tuning in, you still have a chance to help make a difference and donate to camp quality. The link is on the Facebook page right now. Right now, it's on the use the link that's on the Facebook page to donate. You have a chance to win the mega prize pack courtesy of John Cox and Berkeley Fishing. What JP is licking chalkboards. What What are you doing? What? <laughs> J Don't you're not supposed to lick the why dry are you erase Why are you licking chalkboards? As long as he's not eating it. No, he's not eating it. Not J yet. JP's America's sweetheart. You know that about him, honey. Yeah, I heard. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> it's all over the message boards. Ja uh, Jasmine, you uh, you grew up around bass fishing. Yeah, actually, I don't know if anyone knows this, but um, I lived in Boca Raton, Florida. <laughs> <laughs> Did you? That's my girl. I never would have guessed. That's my girl right there. <laughs> That's my girl. You Big secret. Big secret. Big secret. Just <laughs> just talking about it now for the first time. I mean, you grew up around um, bass fishing. I rock, did. Rock and roll. I did. And the mighty Thor. I sure did. You actually have a Thor shirt on. I do. Yeah. That's pretty. Look at that. It's pretty amazing. I should have wore a Captain America one. Yes. We didn't call each other and plan it. Yeah, we, we didn't, but. I'm actually, but you know I have one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm Thor wearing a Captain America shirt. This is a Black right. Panther shirt. Yes, that is a Black Panther shirt. Limited sure. edition. You just can't yeah. see the, the print on here. No, but, it's just uh, the plain one. You know that we play uh, game shows on here, Jasmine. And now uh, you get to play a very special edition of uh, This Has to Do With Your Life Bass Fishing Talk Show Game Show. Okay. Are, are you ready? How'd you come up with that I'm name? I'm trying my best. I just make shit up. You it's know that. I, that's what I do. It's clever. Go. I've been dealing with it, guys, forever. You think that this is crazy once a week? <laughs> you guys probably do this on the phone daily, right? <laughs> <laughs> Let's play Bass Fishing Game Show Talk Show Jasmine's Life Game right here on Stray Cast. I'm Pat Renwick, and I'm proud to say I'm Jasmine Renwick's father, and we're here to play right now. Jasmine... You need to answer this in question form or answer form. Kind of like Jeopardy. You know what sure. I'm saying? All right? Sure. Here's the deal. First question. Jasmine, what is the name of Thor's sister? Uh, Hella. Hella. Hella, yes. That is acceptable. Hella, I am calling for you. I'm bringing Hella back, the word. Not just Thor's sister, but like 
This is a hella awesome bass fishing <laughs> hella show. Hella good game show. Hella good game show. Hella. Hella, hella bassin. Hella bassin. Jasmine, what is the... Stevie? Dog's a star. Jasmine, what is yes. the name of Thor's hammer? It's hard to say. It's like M Mjolnir. 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 Yeah, I'm yeah. Mjolnir. I, I put the wrong emphasis on the wrong syllable. <laughs> pan. Ginger says I'm saying pan. I think I could clear up this whole pan pan situation. <laughs> what was it again? Pan? <laughs> <laughs> okay. What is the greatest rock and roll band in the world, Jasmine? According to me or you? According to me. The Rolling Stones. The Rolling Stones. Thank you very much. You're batting a thousand. You're doing real good here. Jasmine, what bass fishing TV show host was absolutely blown away and brought to tears by your stirring rendition of the Baby Cubs song? That would be Mark Zona. That would be Mark Zona. Yes, you brought Mark Zona to tears. That is true. That was good. I was like, I, was, I must have been like 10. Yeah, or less. <laughs> 10 or less. And you busted out, Baby Cub wanna go sleepy, baby. <laughs> it was amazing. <laughs> Name two species in the black bass family. Two species in the black bass family. Uh, large mouth and small mouth? <laughs> okay, there you go. You're knocking, you're knocking <laughs> it out. You, you are knocking it out. Now we're going to get to the to the trick questions. Trick questions. Or not trick, but harder. Okay. okay. I'm ready. What rod material is better for moving baits? Graphite or fiberglass? Uh, fiberglass. That's my girl. That's my girl right there. That's Impressed. my girl. That's how we do it at Ashley Schaefer. Woo! Last question. Name the only three back to you're back. Holding, you're holding four fingers. This many, baby. Name the... Stopping me. Sure. Name the only three back to back Bassmaster Classic winners. <laughs> okay. KVD. Yeah. yeah. Clun. Ricky Clun. Oh, come on. And Jolie. Jolie. <laughs> uh, yes. That's my girl. You guys rehearsed this, did you? No. We play telepathic mind games. There it is. Good job, honey. And there's Stevie Nicks, the Wonder Dog, making another appearance in the background. I think she just peed on your couch. No. Those are good lies about my dog. <laughs> All right, cool. Hey, um, again, Jazz, any last words that you want to say uh, regarding camp quality? Um, no, just thank you so much to everyone who even considers donating. Um, that link is everywhere. Of course, if you're just listening to this um, later on, if unfortunately you didn't catch it live and you're on iTunes or the website, um, and there's always still a chance to donate. Camp is the first week of August, so we'll be there August 4th through 11th. So you still have all that time to donate too. So it's not right now, but if you do it right now, then John Cox is going to give away some awesome gifts. Uh, awesome. And you um, you are going to text the winner to Nicole. I am. Okay. So we're going to go uh, We're gonna go move on to Nicole Dorr, Bass Fishing Supermodel. She's going to give away the TH Marine Prize. And then you have time to put it through the randomizer and give the winner to Nicole. I do. Thank you so much for having me, Dad, and and Ryan, and Popcorn, and and everybody, JP, the, whoever the ninja is. I don't know. I, that, that, he's a ninja. <laughs> <laughs> it's not important. No, you got it. You got it right. She got it right. She got yeah, it. I, mean, I know everybody, but I don't know their nicknames to their real names. Well, this is Popcorn. The, okay, the, Ryan. The, the redheaded guy yes. back there. That's Andy. the producer. That's Andy, the ginger ninja. And then uh, JP, hi. Spelled H E Y, not hey. You might think it was hey, but it's hi. Hi. Hey, hi, ho. He, hi, he. He, hi, hickey, hi, 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 hey, JP, hi. He is the hip hop fisherman, the OG hip hop fisherman. Yeah. Yeah. He, he goes, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. 
baby, I love you. Thank you so much. I'm so proud of you for the great work that you are doing for Camp Quality. Thank you. I love you more. And see ya. Bye. Thanks. That's my angel right there. She was talking to you. <laughs> right there. Jasmine see ya a week from Monday. <laughs> ice cream tent. The ice cream tent. Right there. Hey, uh, there it is. Now it's time uh, for Christmas. It's time for the Christmas uh, giveaways. Uh-huh. R- right, yeah. Uh-huh. And uh, 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 right now. So we are going to bring on Nicole Door, Bass Fishing Super Modèle. Super. Je pendant, j'ai des fonctions, sont des compensations de laisser ma tache chez toi. Ha oui, oui. C'est le pantin. Sorry, I was multilingualing. I was multilingualing. Mult- You're being all bi. <laughs> yeah, bilingual. <laughs> so here we go. We're bringing a question mark. What the heck is that? We're bringing uh, Nicole Dore, bass fishing supermodel, for the close of the show. Uh, TH Marine prize pack worth $50. All you had to do was like and share the Facebook feed and the Berkeley Mega giveaway, courtesy of John Cox, to those who donated to the Camp Quality website. And ladies and gentlemen, we now bring to the the one, the only bass fishing supermodel. Keep talking. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> here it is. <laughs> Nicole Dorr. There she is. <laughs> Woo. Hey. What's up, Nikki? Nothing. I'm daughter to. What are you saying? I'm waiting for my daughter to. Oh, you're waiting for her to text you. Yes. Okay, well you have the uh, you have the TH Marine prize pack winner. I mean, obviously I do. <laughs> so what's going on? What are you tired? Yes, I, I can, do work. Too. <laughs> I can tell a little bit. You're never supposed to say that to a woman, Pat. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, you're not supposed to say to to a fat woman. You are you pregnant? That that's what you don't say to to women. You're right. Yeah, You're no, right. not you for crying out loud. Unless they're actually pregnant. Yeah, unless then it's fine. Yeah, that could go horribly wrong. Yeah. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> Nicole. Off the rails. How, off the rails on the straight cast crazy train. <laughs> it's been a long show, I'm telling you. But uh, what's going on? What do we got going on? What is the uh, TH Marine Prize package? So, tonight is a $50 code to TH Marine Supplies Online. Okay. As always, you know that they have you covered from your transom to your trolling motor. They sure do. Mm-hmm. Kaboom, kapow. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yep. So, the winner of the $50 gift card, well, not gift cards, but yeah, goes to Tom Monahan. Tom Monahan. Tom Monahan. Tom Monahan. Congratulations. Yes, he won a $50 deal to TH Marine. Plenty, plenty enough to get you a just hot shit culling system. Yeah. One of the best culling I mean, systems. And, and actually, it's probably I, the best. I just want to clear it up. You are going to um, send a direct message to us at Stray Cass and pick up to $50 worth of of merchandise so it's uh, it's not with the code this week that's my bad the it's it's yeah i'm sorry i'm sorry the uh, the deal is you get uh to tell us pick up to 50 dollars worth of merchandise from th marine we're gonna ship it to you so that's uh-huh. yeah it's pretty easy mm-hmm. pretty plain and simple what is that picture behind you what is that it's pretty cool it's a bear oh now i see okay i thought it was like some kind of retro art like andy warhol but I couldn't no. see the Bears logo. I'm just hoping that they'll win soon. <laughs> That's all. I'm like doing. tomorrow. I hope they win their game tomorrow. Maybe <laughs> tonight. Yeah. I'm okay. <laughs> I hope William Refrigerator Perry does well. Yeah, he's doing in, all right. In, in that game. <laughs> have you gotten a text from Jasmine yet? I have not. Okay. You know, I am questioning why you never let me play a game on your show. Oh. Okay. Well, you want to play a game? I don't know if I'm ready. <laughs> <laughs> you just asked. 
Yeah, but I was like, like hinting, like maybe like soon, but like not like today soon, like soon. But you know, if you want to do it today, we can do it today. Well, we, we, to- you, we can we can do it another time when you're more prepared. But today would be funnier if we did it because you're not prepared at all. Right now, right now, right now. Oh, ladies and gentlemen, your bass fishing super battle, Nicole Door, 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 Door. Keep them going. <laughs> All right, let's play. Uh, let's play a game, and um, we are going to give you a bass fishing bait. <coughs> and you, sure. Andy, <laughs> and you tell us your favorite technique for this bass fishing bait. Okay. Are you ready? Let's play. Okay. I like the other music. <laughs> but, but, Let's get fun. No, not that one. The James Brown one. Let's get smooth. Ah, yes. Here it is. Bait tips with Nicole Dore, bass fishing super groover model. Nicole? Mm. Spinnerbait. Just a quick tip. Spinnerbait. You, you changed the game. Just say War Eagle. Say, the answer is War Eagle. War Eagle. War Eagle. Yes, yes. Yeah, there you go. Yes. Good job. Finesse. Nicole. Five sixteen. Swim jig. Swim jig. War Eagle. <laughs> <laughs> Braverni. The answer is Braverni jigs. Braverni jig. Yes. Nailing it. Got it. Nicole, trolling motor to transom. H Marine. TH Marine. Yes. Yes. Nicole, what are those poles on the back of my boat? Power freaking poles. Yeah, power freaking poles. <laughs> You are, are nailing it. I thought there were ski poles. <laughs> you are absolutely nailing it. Thank you. And, Nicole, last question. What is the best bass fishing talk show on the web? I don't know, because this could be number two at times. Yes. We're actually number, number five. Number four. Four or five. Yeah. Truth. Six or seven? No, four. No, no, never, never less than five. I think there's only five. Yeah. In my heart, this is number one. So In your heart, five. this is number. Nicole Door, you are a winner. You are a winner. Woo! Yes. Okay, so I guess I, do we have a do we have a winner for the? Maybe there's a problem with the. Uh... Oh, she did text oh. you. She did text you. Did check your text. Okay. Okay, let me check. I'm sorry. I apologize. Let's Where'd she see. go? I'm I'm right here. She's checking the text. There is only one winner in any sport. The winner of the camp quality. John Cox. Berkeley Fishing Prize Giveaway is about to happen now. World of Bass Fishing. Are you ready? Nicole Door, are you ready? The winner. I'm ready. Who was the winner? Hold up. This is go well. The winner of the Mega Prize Pack tonight by John Cox is Adam Gunlock. Adam Gunlock. <laughs> Congratulations, Adam. Wow. Wow! Holy cow! He's never gonna need any Berkeley baits again in his life. Nope. Soft plastic. Nope. What a cool deal! What a cool deal that is. And Adam, uh, direct message um, us your contact info uh, to the Straycast Facebook page. He, he was one of our first prize winners. Ever. He was first prize winner ever. He yeah. won the first War Eagle prize. Like way, way back. I way, think it was back. a PH and a wart. Yeah, yeah. Way, way back. Way, way back. Yeah, yeah. years. Well, he deserves it because he's been years supporting ago. the show. He forever. watches every week. And full circle. Let's go in full circle. It, Whoops. It, it's the full deal right there. Uh, Nicole, amazing job tonight, as usual. And uh, um, you knocked it out. So we'll play, uh, we'll play another sponsor game show next time.
Awesome. Maybe I'll come more prepared. <laughs> you did great, though, and, and thank you so much. Uh, everyone follow Nicole A. O R E on Instagram. Nicole A O R E on Insta. Right there. She's our very own bass fishing supermodel. Nicole, uh, we'll see you uh, next week. Thank you so much. Bye bye, guys. Peace. That Thanks. is Nicole Door. This is another episode of Stray Cast Outdoor Cartoon Television. In backwards order of appearance, Jasmine Renwick, thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for coming on the show and all you do for camp quality uh thank you brandon cobb dude uh, amazing awesome. amazing time with brandon cobb and of course smiling johnny cox thank you to you and berkeley fishing uh for donating the prize pack to the donator to camp quality yeah. i don't know how else to put it in thanks thanks one. to everyone who donated yeah and, and uh and again special thanks we want to run down um, our sponsors, thank you, War Eagle. Thank you, Dem Jigs. Thank you, Bravarni. Thank you, TH Marine. Thank you, Alpha Angler. Thank you, Power Pole. Thank you, JB Fish Sauce. Thank you, PH Custom Lures. Thank you, Shane's Baits. And thank you, War Eagle. And most thanks of all to all you watching out there. Without uh, without you guys out there, this show's nothing but just uh, us uh shooting the shit same thing yeah same deal anyway <laughs> but yeah we appreciate you being here hey i'm pat renwick ryan whitaker jp hi america's sweetheart andrew yeah. ellenberger the ginger ninja uh larry kyleman we bid you peace we're out catch you next week same place